we want to evaluate the given inverse trig expressions. When evaluating inverse trig expressions, we're given a trig function value or a trig ratio, and we're finding an angle from a particular interval that has the given trig function value. So notice how these three examples involve arc cosine or inverse cosine, which means the arranger output must be in the closed interval from zero to pi radians. So for arc cosine of square root three divided by two, we're looking for an angle theta in the closed interval from zero to pi that has a cosine function value of square root three divided by two. For arc cosine negative one, we're looking for an angle theta in this closed interval that has a cosine function value of negative one. And for arc cosine negative one half, we're looking for an angle theta in this closed interval that has a cosine function value of negative one half. In this example, we'll use a unit circle to find these angles. I do have other videos that show how to use reference triangles. And we'll also check our results on the graphing calculator. So for arc cosine square root three divided by two, we're looking for an angle that terminates in the first or second quadrant that has a cosine function value of square root three divided by two. So on the unit circle, that means we're looking for an x coordinate of square root three divided by two in either the first or second quadrants. Remember on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta. And notice how we have an x coordinate of square root three divided by two here. So the angle we're looking for is three degrees or pi over six radians. So arc cosine square root three divided by two equals pi over six radians. Let's check this on the graphing calculator. To check this on the calculator though, we do want to check it in degree mode since it'd be difficult to recognize pi divided by six as a decimal approximation. Let's first check our mode. We'll press the mode key. Notice how degree is highlighted, so we'll go back to the home screen and we'll press second cosine for arc cosine or inverse cosine. And then we have square root three, right arrow, divided by two, close parenthesis, and enter. Three degrees does equal pi over six radians, verifying our answer. Next we have arc cosine negative one. So again, we're looking for an angle in this closed interval that has a cosine function value of negative one, which means we're looking for an x coordinate of negative one in the first or second quadrant, or along the x or y axis. And notice how we do have an x coordinate of negative one here at 180 degrees, or pi radians. And again, notice how this angle is in the closed interval from zero to pi radians. So here we have arc cosine negative one equals pi radians. Let's check this on the calculator. So we have second cosine negative one, close parenthesis, enter. 180 degrees is pi radians. And now for our last example, we have arc cosine negative one half. So now we're looking for an x coordinate of negative one half in the first or second quadrants of the unit circle. Notice how everything's positive in the first quadrant, so the angle must be in the second quadrant. Notice here we have an x coordinate of negative one half where the angle is 120 degrees or two pi divided by three radians. So we have arc cosine negative one half equals two pi divided by three radians. Checking this on the calculator, we would have second cosine negative one half, which does give us 120 degrees or two pi divided by three radians. I hope you found these examples helpful.